In the heliocentric model, Earth is just one of eight planets in our solar system, all of which are said to be huge spherical Earth-like habitations or globular gas giants millions of miles away. They claim the Earth under our feet, along with these seven other planets, all revolve concentric circles or ellipses around the Sun, hence the term heliocentric. The previously prevailing geocentric model had placed Earth as the immovable center of the universe, with the sun, moon, stars, and planets all revolving around us, just as they appear. In the heliocentric model, however, which would be more appropriately titled the acentric model, the sun is only the center of our solar system, while itself, supposedly, simultaneously, revolving 500,000 mile per hour spirals around the Milky Way galaxy, which itself is constantly shooting 670 million miles per hour away from an alleged Big Bang creationary explosion at the beginning of time. In the geocentric model, the seven planets were known as wandering stars, with the multitude of other stars known as fixed stars. The wandering stars were so-called because they can be seen meandering their own unique paths around the heavens, while all the other stars remain fixed in their steady group rotation around Polaris. The wandering stars also happen to be among the brightest in the night sky, and just as heliocentrists falsely claim the moon to be a mere reflector of the sun's light, they claim the bright starlight of these planets is merely them reflecting the sun's light back at us. This has already been shown to be geometrically impossible, however, as convex bodies do not and cannot reflect light in this way. In the heliocentric model, the wandering stars are all supposedly spherical Earth-like places several million miles away from us, while the fixed stars are all allegedly super-distant suns, similar to our own, but several trillion miles away, complete with their own solar systems and accompanying planets, perhaps even populated with sentient alien beings like ourselves. NASA's current official astronomical statistics state that there are upwards of 10 trillion such planets in our galaxy alone, and at least 200 billion galaxies in the universe. Therefore, they claim Earth is only one of one septillion planets in the universe. David Wardlaw Scott said, Our modern astronomers imagine the stars to be immense worlds or suns, some of them many thousands of times larger than our own, and at an enormous distance. Sir Robert Ball in his Cause of an Ice Age says of Sirius that it is a million times as distant from us as the sun that it is 92 millions of millions of miles from the Earth. It is thought that stars are in a more or less advanced state of development, and that probably some of them may be already inhabited by beings suited to their spheres. Their distance from us they calculate to be so immense that, according to Sir William Herschel, the light from some of them will take a thousand years to reach this world of ours. Dr. Samuel Robotham said, Again, these stars are assumed to have positions so far from the Earth that the distance is almost inexpressible. Figures, indeed, may be arranged on paper, but in reading them, no practical idea is conveyed to the mind. Many are said to be so distant that they should fall with the velocity of light, or above 160,000 miles in a second of time, 600 million miles per hour. They would require nearly 2 million years to reach the Earth. Sir William Herschel, in a paper on the power of telescopes to penetrate into space, affirms that with his powerful instruments he discovered brilliant luminaries so far from the Earth that the light which they emitted could not have been less than 1,900,000 years in its progress. Albert Smith said, The fixed stars are so called because, except for very long periods, they do not appreciably alter their relative positions, and they are mere points of light so small that the most powerful telescopes cannot magnify them into disks, yet they are supposed to be suns of immense size removed by the astronomers to immeasurable distance away from us for the credit and convenience of their theories. 
NASA even claims to have sent several remote-controlled flying telescopes, like the popular Hubble camera, into outer space, transmitting back to Earth pictorial proof of the validity of their model. These Hubble pictures show that the wandering stars are all in fact spherical Earth-like planets, just as the heliocentrists claimed all along. The Hubble pictures showed that the fixed stars are also, in fact, distant suns, trillions of miles away, just as the heliocentrists claimed. The Hubble pictures and videos, all of which are indistinguishable from a good Photoshop or Hollywood production, completely confirm for hypnotized heliocentrists the truth of NASA's claims and the existence of various celestial phenomena which only NASA and their advanced cameras can show, like planets, galaxies, black holes, quasars, etc. Using even the most advanced non-NASA telescopes, however, the fixed and wandering stars appear to be nothing more than tiny dots of multicolored light. It cannot be ascertained whether fixed stars are actually distant suns, whether wandering stars are actually Earth-like planets, or whether any of NASA's claims hold any validity outside of their alleged pictorial evidence from these supposed remote control flying space telescope images. Outside of NASA, what evidence do we have that stars are actually distant solar systems? What evidence do we have that planets are Earth-like places in space? They are certainly interesting and plausible ideas, but there is absolutely no empirical evidence to support them. In fact, if NASA hadn't implanted such ideas into their heads, very few people would ever look up at the night sky and assume those little pinpricks of light were all Earth-like objects millions of miles away or suns trillions of miles away, complete with orbiting planets and moons just like ours. The only reason people believe wandering stars are Earth-like planets and fixed stars are distant suns is because of NASA propaganda. As Gabrielle Henriette said, the planets are not solid, opaque masses of matter as is believed. They are simply immaterial, luminous, and transparent disks. If stars are all distant planets or suns, how is it that various phenomena have been observed, including stars changing color, intensity of light, sudden appearance, disappearance, or shooting quickly from one place to another? I have watched single stars changing their colors as regularly as a disco ball, others shooting through the sky and disappearing, and stranger still, I once saw a star shoot quickly straight upwards through the sky for two seconds and then stop again. Back in the late 16th century, when the heliocentric theory was starting to take hold over the imaginations of an unsuspecting public, Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe famously argued for geocentricity, positing that if the Earth revolved in an orbit around the Sun, the change in relative position of the stars after six months of orbital motion could not fail to be seen. The stars should seem to separate as we approach and come together as we recede. In actual fact, however, after 190 million miles of supposed orbit around the sun, not a single inch of parallax can be detected in the stars. Thomas Winship said, In the time of Tycho Brahe, it was said that the Earth revolved around the sun, but he argued that if the Earth revolved around the sun, the relative position of the stars would change very much, and the matter must, in the nature of the case, be easily detected. Accordingly, experiments were tried at intervals of six months, and the result showed that the stars were in exactly the same position as they had occupied six months before, thus proving that the Earth does not move at all. If the Earth is at a given point in space on, say, January 1st, and according to its present-day science at a distance of 190 million miles from that point six months afterwards, it follows that the relative position and directions of the stars will have greatly changed, however small the angle of parallax may be. That this great change is nowhere apparent and has never been observed incontestably proves that the Earth is at rest, that it does not move in an orbit around the Sun. When Tycho Brahe demonstrated that after 190 million miles of supposed orbit around the Sun, not a single inch of parallax could be detected, heliocentrists, desperate to patch the glaring hole in their theory, pushed their hypothetical distances to the stars into the trillions of miles, claiming the closest one, Proxima Centauri, was a ludicrous 25 trillion miles away, and thereby making all the stars so conveniently far that no appreciable parallax could be detected. 
This expedient explanation, which heliocentrists have clung to ever since, has proven satisfactory to silence the manipulated minds of the masses, but still fails to adequately account for several issues. Dr. Samuel Robotham wrote, It is found by observation that the stars come to the meridian about four minutes earlier every 24 hours than the sun, taking the solar time as the standard. This makes 120 minutes every 30 days, and 24 hours in the year. Hence all the constellations have passed before or in advance of the sun in that time. This is the simple fact as observed in nature, but the theory of rotundity and motion on axes and in an orbit has no place for it. Visible truth must be ignored because this theory stands in the way and prevents its votaries from understanding it. William Carpenter said, Considerably more than a million Earths would be required to make up a body like the sun, the astronomers tell us, and more than 53,000 suns would be wanted to equal the cubic contents of the star Vega. And Vega is a small star, and there are countless millions of these stars, and it takes 30 million years for the light of some of those stars to reach us at 12 million miles in a minute. And, says Mr. Proctor, I think a moderate estimate of the age of the Earth would be 500 million years. Its weight, says the same individual, is 6 heptillion tons. Now since no human being is able to comprehend these things, the giving of them to the world is an insult, an outrage, and though they have all risen from the one assumption that Earth is a planet, instead of upholding the assumption, they drag it down by the weight of their own absurdity and leave it lying in the dust, a proof that the Earth is not a globe. Several experiments have since been performed and repeated by notable scientists like Albert Mickelson, Edward Morley, George Airy, and George Sanyak, proving that it is the stars that revolve around a stationary Earth and not the other way around. The conclusive results of their experiments are not contested or even mentioned in modern astronomy books. Rather, they are conveniently swept under the carpet to keep prying minds from seeing through the lies. For example, the experiment known as Aries failure, since it failed to prove heliocentricity, involved filling a telescope with water to slow the speed of light inside. Usually telescopes must be slightly tilted to get starlight down the axis of the tube, supposedly due to Earth's speed around the sun. Aries discovered that actually the starlight was already coming in at the correct angle, so no change was necessary. This demonstrated that the stars move relative to a stationary Earth and not the other way around because if it was the telescope moving, he would have to change the angle. Gabrielle Henriette said, All the planets, including the sun, revolve around the Earth. These circumstances cannot be denied since they are plainly visible, either in the ordinary way with the naked eye or with the help of the telescope. It can be said in this connection that in the case of a science which should be based exclusively on observation and not on speculation, such as astronomy, the evidence of the senses is the only factor upon which conclusions can and must be based. If the planets can be seen revolving around the Earth, it is for the decisive factor that they do revolve in such a way. It is asserted that this is not so, and it is maintained that the Earth and the planets revolve around the Sun. We note with astonishment, however, the bizarre and definitely suspicious fact that these planetary movements are not visible. They cannot be seen, and yet they are called real. How can these movements be proved and their speed be ascertained since they are invisible? On the other hand, the existing geocentric planetary motions which can be observed and measured, and which consequently constitute a perfectly valid system, are condemned as unreal and apparent. A pertinent remark may incidentally be made on the subject. Why do the astronomical tables which are published year after year give the so-called apparent movements of the planets in the zodiac? Why take the trouble of calculating and putting them on record at all if they are not real? Why is it also that no mention is made of the so-called real movements of the planets? Marshall Hall said, Trust your eyes and your cameras. They have no reason to deceive you about whether the stars are going around you nightly. Then get it in your mind, this single fact surrounding star trails that has been photographed thousands of times and cannot be denied must be explained away by the theoretical science establishment. 
all of the factless allegations, a rotating and orbiting Earth, billions of light-year distances to the stars, a 15 billion year old universe, the whole Big Bang paradigm, all of the alleged evolution of the universe, Earth, and mankind, that is to say, all of modern evolution-based cosmology controlling knowledge today, all of it, is completely undone if the stars are doing what cameras show they are doing, namely, going around the Earth nightly. If you can do so for a few minutes, just lay aside the Copernican indoctrination that accompanies such pictures, and take a good hard look at these photographs of something that really, really happens every single night. Do you see what I see? I see all the visible stars in the northern skies going around the North Star in perfect circles. In other words, I see all the stars which these time exposures have recorded actually going around that navigational star that God put there for us in the northern hemisphere. Thomas Winship said, The plurality of worlds is based on assumptions so contrary to known possibilities that the grand idea must be thrown into the waste paper basket. The supposed great distance of the sun from the earth is the main cause of the delusions of the learned as to the so-called worlds above us being inhabited. This distance is based on a fictitious idea, that of the revolution of the earth round the sun, which I have already shown to be unconditionally false. The sun is a small body of light and near the earth, therefore all the star distances are wrong, their sizes and all other suppositions. The plurality of worlds is only the logical sequence of belief if the earth be a rapidly revolving globe, but this has been shown to be ridiculous in the extreme. Evidence, apart from any theory, has been presented which entirely nullifies such an assumption and renders it absurd, showing that such an unnatural idea has not a vestige of natural fact to support it. The grand doctrine of the plurality of worlds, therefore, like all of the other grand doctrines of modern astronomy, must be consigned to oblivion. When it can be shown that this world is a globe, and by what known principle the inhabitants can hang on to the swinging ball, like the housefly crawls along the ceiling, it will be quite time enough to talk about the plurality of worlds. In other words, the plurality of worlds, if there's supposed to be many, many ball planets spinning around in this infinite universe, that only makes sense in the heliocentric spinning ball cosmology. It's been shown that the Earth is flat and motionless, so the idea that there are many other Earth-like planets out there, or there are many other ball habitations spinning around in the sky, is ridiculous. You can see with a telescope that the things that they call planets look exactly like the things that they call stars. And before they started calling them planets, they were called stars. They were called wandering stars. If the planets are supposed to be masses like Earth, why is it that their starlight is often brighter than the other stars, which they claim are suns? Why would they have light at all? It's the same like with the moon. They claim to land on the moon, and they show this desert planet, but we look up at the moon and see a shining light coming from this disk. If the moon is so bright shining with light like that, why weren't the astronauts constantly illuminated by this huge light that shines all the way 238,000 miles to the Earth? But then when they're on the moon, it's just dirt. When you look at these things through an actual telescope, they just look like disks of light. They don't look at all like suns or like ball planets. And when you take a good look at what NASA is feeding you, it's CGI. All the ball planets, every shot that NASA shows of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, did I miss any? All these things, all, all their pictures of these planets are clearly made on a computer. They are CGI, computer graphic images, computer generated images. So the idea that there are many other spinning ball planets out there in the sky is false. NASA doesn't do science. NASA does science fiction. Heliocentricity is not science. It's science fiction. Geocentricity is what you actually experience. It's what actually happens. 
The flat earth is what you actually experience. You do not experience a curve. You do not experience motion. You don't feel yourself moving a thousand miles an hour. The stars don't change their relative positions. They're fixed because they're revolving around us just as it appears. Think about it. If we were revolving around the sun and the sun revolving around the galaxy and the galaxy revolving around the universe, guess what? All the stars would change their position every single night. You wouldn't be able to catch the same star trails two consecutive nights, let alone for hundreds and hundreds of years, not changing positions. If you had those four different motions, everything spiraling around each other, you can't have the North Star fixed and all the other stars fixed in their constellations revolving perfect circles around it. Can't happen. You couldn't even have perfect circle star trails. They would be spirals. They would be awkward spirals. They would be like elliptical spirals. So, point is, Earth is not a planet. It's a plane. They just added a T to the end and fooled everyone. And then they started saying, there's one septillion other planets too, just like Earth. And then once they got people believing that, now they're saying, and there must be life on some of those. So there's aliens. And now they're preparing you for aliens. That's what's coming next. They want you to believe in aliens. They want you to believe that there's some off-world enemy or friend that's going to come here to save or destroy us, and they're going to use that as a false flag event to further their agenda. It's been in the works for a long time, so this is a big one. You could even say that this is the purpose of the Ball Earth Deception. What's the purpose? to create a world religion. What do you think NASA is? What do you think the spinning ball earth, universe, big bang, evolution bullshit is? It's a religion. People believe this shit and it doesn't exist. So, well, why did they lie about the flat earth, Eric? Because they're making you believe in a bullshit science fiction religion. That's why. You don't even know that you're in a cult. You don't know that you've been brainwashed and how deeply you've been brainwashed. You've been brainwashed so much that instead of thinking that you come from a intelligent consciousness, you think that you come from nothing and monkeys. They brainwash you to think that you and Earth aren't special or unique, but that there's just infinite Earths and worlds and beings, and humans are not the most intelligent of the intelligent designers' designs. They want you to believe that there's some aliens out there, more intelligent. They want you to believe that they're more intelligent than you, because only they have the Hubble Space Telescope, and only they have all the technology necessary to tell you that, oh, stars are really suns, and the wandering stars are, are planets, and, oh, we found water on Mars with our little probe rover thing. Check out these CGI images we sent back on our million mile internet connection that we have, but you don't, and you've never seen anywhere. Think about how effective this religion is. It's worldwide. It is a world religion. They have successfully created a worldwide religion and made people the whole world over believe in it. They teach it to them in government schools, and they're so indoctrinated into this religion they have no idea that it's a religion. That's the point. They call it science. They have no idea that they're in a cult being brainwashed by a bunch of CGI pictures and fairy tales. So why the Flat Earth Deception? It's the most successful religious indoctrination in history. That's why.